Thursday practice for the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix is over and the fastest driver of the day was Fernando Alonso in the Aston Martin. But what did we learn? Well, in today's video, I'm going to be doing a data analysis from practice. If you enjoyed the video, then please hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now, let's get straight into the video. As usual, I'm going to be talking about Aston Martin, McLaren, Mercedes, Ferrari and Red Bull later on, so stick around for that. The first day is over and in Saudi Arabia, much like Bahrain, FP1 and FP2 take place in completely different conditions. FP1 took place during the day and FP2 took place under the lights. And because of this, we typically see that in FP2, it is a fair bit faster than FP1. That was the case in Bahrain and it was the case again in Saudi Arabia. To show the difference, I've brought up the fastest lap from FP1, which was a 129.659, and that was set by Max Verstappen in the Red Bull. And in FP2, the fastest lap time was a 128.827, and that was set by Fernando Alonso. So that we can now see the differences between the sessions. Down the main straight, Verstappen is significantly slower in FP1 when compared to Alonso. Also, when it comes to the braking zones and the exits of the corners, you can see that Alonso is able to get back onto power much sooner. This is what you would expect, as the circuit improves and the grip comes to the drivers. As this happens, they will gain more and more confidence, and with that confidence, they will be earlier onto the throttle. The top speed around the Jeddah circuit is much higher than the top speed around the Bahrain circuit, and this is because the teams tend to run with a lot less downforce in order to get the higher straight line speeds. Alongside this, Saudi Arabia also features a lot of long straight sections at full throttle. The layout lends itself to lower downforce as the drivers do spend a lot of time at full throttle. So let's now have a look at the top speeds from each team in FP2. To use this, I've taken the fastest lap time from each team and I'm going to take the top speed that they reach to gauge where they are when it comes to top speeds. And when you look at these, you can see that the team with the highest top speed was Mercedes as George Russell was able to reach 334 kilometers per hour. That is 10 kilometers per hour more than the slowest car in a straight line, which was the McLaren car. This shows to me that Mercedes may have had things turned up a little bit more than their rivals, which given that they didn't finish first today, could be a little bit of a worry for them. Now that we've seen the top speeds, the question is what teams in the midfield were looking good and what teams were not looking so good. Well, sadly for them, Haas, which may be kind of a surprise to me, didn't do so well today. To show their pace, I've brought up the fastest lap from Kevin Magnussen and I'm going to be comparing that to Joe Guan Yu in the Sauber. And what can we see when we look at these two lap times? Well, what we can actually see is there's a lot of differences between these two laps. Firstly, the Haas clearly has the top speed edge down all of the straights. This is something that we've come to expect as Haas have been quick in a straight line all through last year and so far this year. However, it is when it comes to the braking zones that things get interesting. It looks like at a lot of these zones that Magnussen in the Haas is braking later than Joe. However, he is compromising by getting worse exits and not being able to carry as much minimum speed into the apexes. So he's actually scrubbing off more speed despite braking later. And because of this, he is losing time. Also, through the high-speed corners in Sector 1 here, you can see that the Sauber is able to carry more speed, indicating that it is possible that they have a little bit more downforce than the Haas car. For Haas, this is somewhat interesting. It seems like they could actually be quicker, but on K-Mag's lap, he was too aggressive into the braking zones and actually losing out. If you can sort this out, then there's no reason why Haas can't improve their position and I think they could be a contender for Q3 once again. Haas may have not been looking as strong over one lap, and that was maybe down to their mistakes, but one team that did look good in the midfield, which is a surprise, is Alpine, as they had a decent day and a better day than at any point in Bahrain. Gasly was able to beat both McLarens today, which is very impressive. Let's now compare his fastest lap to Yuki Tsunoda, who was his closest rival in the RB. Well, it is clear where Alpine are not faster when you look at these times, and that is in a straight line. Because down the straight, they are actually losing out when compared to Sonoda. However, in the same place where Joe was faster, it's the same case for Gasly as he's able to carry more speed. Showing that, somewhat like in Bahrain, that even though the Alpine is heavy and lacking power, they do still seem to have a decent amount of downforce on their car. 
it does look like they can get good traction as well, which is where they gain time on the RB. So, on one lap, Alpine looked good, but the question is, how did they look on the long runs? Well, to show that, I have brought up the long runs of Gasly in the Alpine, Joe in the Sauber, and Alex Albon in the Williams. And what can we see here? Well, what we can see is that Gasly was looking a little bit better than the Sauber of Joe, which for them is a big improvement from where they were in Bahrain. But they were not able to match the Williams, even though Albon was on the harder tyres. It looks like this weekend it will be better for the Alpine team, but they are still a little bit off of where they need to be. I just want to say that if you are enjoying the video so far, then please hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now though, let's get back to the video and let's talk about the top 5 teams, starting with Aston Martin. For Aston Martin coming into this weekend, there was a little bit of a worry about them. In Bahrain, they looked to have fallen away from the top 4 teams, but were clearly ahead of the rest behind them. But so far in Jeddah, it looks like that any concern may have been misplaced, as Fernando Alonso had an absolutely fantastic day behind the wheel of his Aston Martin. The team doesn't need to worry about any tyre wear woes that they suffered in Bahrain, because the tyre wear in Jeddah is very low, and his pace was very strong. Let's look at his fastest lap time from FP2, and compare it to his teammate Lance Stroll, so that we can compare the two laps. Stroll was half a second down on his teammate, and let's see how and why he was so far down. Ultimately, when you look at these two lap times, you can see that Alonso wins out because he is clearly a lot more confident around this circuit. He's carrying more minimum apex speed into plenty of corners, and he's getting back onto the throttle sooner. These laps, for me, really show the difference between a driver who is happy with a car and a driver that is not quite as happy. This also shows how easy it is to lose half a second of a lap. For Stroll, he still finished very well today, but he will need to improve if he really wants to get into the fight and help his teammate Fernando Alonso. Because I feel like Alonso, he may be looking good over one lap, but the Aston Martin when it comes to race pace is still struggling a little bit and he could do with the help from his teammate. For McLaren, today was not a great day as Piastri was down in 10th place and Norris was in 12th place. The one lap pace may have been concerning, but how did they end up so far down? Well, let's compare the lap times of Piastri to Alonso so that we can see where the McLaren was missing out. The obvious area where they were missing out is, well, you may have known if you just looked at the top speed graph from earlier, the straight line speed. But it's not just this. Alonso and the Aston Martin just looked more comfortable everywhere. And I feel like without a big move forward, the McLaren team might actually be the fifth fastest team this weekend, especially if they are so slow in a straight line. The one lap pace may have not been the best, but how about the longer runs? Well, let's compare Piastri to Russell in the Mercedes, as they are McLaren's main competition. There is not that many laps really to compare between them, however, and the pace here tends to show that Russell in the Mercedes had a few tenths in his pocket when compared to McLaren, who might just be a little bit weaker at this circuit right now. For Mercedes, George Russell finished the day in second place, and teammate Lewis Hamilton finished down in 8th place as Hamilton is seemingly starting the season a little bit slow and he does seem to have a few more struggles when compared to his teammate, which does sometimes happen with Lewis. Let's now compare the lap times between Russell and Hamilton to see where Lewis needs to make up some time over one lap. I know that there are people who will be saying that the team is just giving Russell a better car, but really, I'm not sure that's the case. I think it is more that Russell is just more confident and more comfortable with the car at the moment, because there are periods where Hamilton can gain time on Russell, and that is in the quick change of direction right here. But at the end of the second DRS zone, which is where you can really tell the difference between who is comfy and who is not, Russell carries a lot more speed, showing to me that he is a lot more comfortable with the car. For Hamilton, he is the master of looking at data and working through it to improve his car. I wouldn't be surprised if we see him improve the car a little bit more for tomorrow and he finds himself a little bit closer to George Russell. For Ferrari, their day was one that was a little bit tricky to read. Things started off fairly well for Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz, but as it came to the qualifying runs, their pace fell slightly when compared to Fernando Alonso. Let's compare the times of Leclerc to Alonso to see where the differences were. 
The first obvious difference is at the opening of the lap down the pit straight as Alonso is significantly faster. The Aston also looks to have great mechanical grip compared to the Ferrari as Alonso is able to just get fantastic drive off of the corners. This was a feature of the Aston Martin that we saw last year and it looks like that has been carried forward to this year as Aston Martin just get great drive and traction out of the corners. And this is where he's able to make up the time as he carries this advantage all the way down the straight. This great traction and drive that the Aston Martin gets could also be why they are a little bit harder on the rear tyres, which is what we saw back in Bahrain. For Ferrari, there is definitely work to do still if they want to get a driver on the podium on race day because Red Bull are looking very strong in race trim and Alonso in the Aston Martin might just be a little bit too much for one of the Ferraris. And finally for Red Bull, it is weird to see them not topping the times today as Max Verstappen was in third place and Sergio Perez was in fifth place. I'm sure that there is still a lot more to come from Verstappen though, and really, even though his one lap pace may have not been the fastest, I don't think there's anything to really worry about, and you can see that when you look at the long runs of Verstappen, and you compare that to the Ferrari and the Aston Martin. When you look at these times, you can really see where Verstappen has the edge when it comes to race pace. He is just so much faster when it comes to those longer runs, and the Red Bull is looking like it is going to be another strong car in race trim. So, what did we learn today? Haas weren't the best midfield today, but they could easily be a lot faster if they just adapt their driving styles a little bit. McLaren looked to be fifth fastest overall this weekend. Alonso is absolutely flying around here on one lap, and Verstappen still has an edge when it comes to the race. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.